Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield here with one of my favourite people, a big star, Noel Fielding. How Hello. are you? How are you? I'm good, thanks. What's it like to be a sex symbol and very cool? <laughs> Not sure on either of those things anymore. I think I had like two minutes where I was slightly cool and slightly a sex symbol, and it was fun. I think I got voted the sexiest man of the year by enemy. Well, even this year in GQ, I think they're saying you're the best dressed or something like that. Does this surprise you? Because that's 30. not what you came into the business for, was I it? I think really? I'm number 32. I was number two at one point. I'm slipping horrendously oh. down the charts. What is Elton it, the Christmas John, jumper or Elton something? Elton John's higher than me in the charts. Let's not get to it. And Romeo Beckham, let's not get too excited. Do you put a lot of yeah. time and effort and thought into it? Because, I mean, your persona is so big and I, so defines you as an artist. Is it something you really care about? I think maybe in the Mighty Boosh and stuff, it was a chance where I could dress up, you know? You can be a different character. You can be a slightly make-believe character, which is great. Um, and then you have to kind of carry that on into your real life. Otherwise, people are disappointed, you know? You know one wants to see Nick Cave in tracksuit bottoms. So you have to kind of, if you're going to get a Tesco's, you have to put a poncho on. It's just the way it is. I think that's the deal, isn't it? If it's you saw Kate Bush, you'd want her to be in a red dress. You wouldn't really want her to be in Ugg boots. It's just not. You seem surprised to me that people put their hand in their pocket and buy a ticket to see your show or tune in to see you on the TV. Is it still odd? Just grateful, you know, just happy, lucky. I feel lucky, you know, with the Bush, we... By the time we got to playing like the O2 in Wembley, we were like, wow, this is bizarre. Because, you know, the show was quite weird, you know, about a, a sort of transsexual who's a merman, you know, old Greg and then Crack Fox. You know, they're quite weird. It was quite a weird little show, you know, quite idiosyncratic. So we were quite surprised that it built up such a big following live and stuff, you know, and with DVDs. So we were um, always eternally grateful. Our fans have always been very loyal and very... Um, unusual and dress up as our characters and stuff so yeah we're very grateful because it just means you can keep doing what you do you know and if you're not completely mainstream then it's important to be able to have the money or be able to do it as a career so that you can just keep working at it you know and producing more stuff it was interesting when you went mainstream to BBC Two and Buzzcocks that brought you yeah. to a whole new audience who fell in love with you and what was great about you you were sort of the anti-comedian you were not trying to get the zingers in you were just being you where do those thoughts come from? Because they seem to just come into your head and make everybody laugh. That just feels like, you know, when, you know when you're with your friends and you watch telly and you're just all mucking about? That's all that feels like to me. And then, um, yeah, there's something quite sort of... Some comedians sort of spend ages writing. I, start, I tried to do some jokes on that to begin with, and then I kind of felt like I learned a lot from Phil Jupiter. So he was just like, just be yourself and just improvise and... You know, occasionally or really, you get good at it. You learn that if you're going to do a long rambling thing about bumblebees, that's not going in the show. You need to do a tight one liner every now and then, and that will go in the show. You don't need to do much on those shows. You know, if you say two or three funny things and they go in the edit, you're done. You know, so in a way, it's quite nice to give other people space. And I was always quite good at getting pop stars to come out of their shells a bit. You know, like Paloma Faith or whoever I was sitting with. Harry from Peace, you know, I'm quite good at sort of, or Paul Foot, you know, giving the floor to someone else, and it's like a tea party, really. They're really good fun to do, so. But then they stick the anomaly guest in who is a bit strange and odd <laughs> and not really necessarily aware of the programme. Do they always get you? Yeah. I've, have you had odd reactions before and after the show? Yeah, well, I always used to have to fore everyone out. If there was anyone being a bit frosty, who turned up, I'm like, what is this show? You know, big stars, I won't name any names, but if we had some big star from America who didn't know what the show was and was furious and was drinking a giant cup of coffee and had just got <laughs> off a plane with jet lag, they'd go, no, quick, go in and go warm that guest up. And I'd spend an hour trying to get them into the spirit of the buzzcock. So, yeah, that became my role in the show. You've got the new tour starting next week and, of course, the live DVD, which is out as well. Yeah. What pressure is there on you to be funny now? Because having the first gig and selling it None. is great. And then you've got to come back with something that's even better. Well, you know, I think live, the pressure is you just have to be funny live. There's no getting around it. You have to do a joke and they laugh and then you do another joke and they laugh. And if they don't, you've got to change that joke. <laughs> Television is just, you know, it's different because there's no one there. So it's a sort of... You have to have a blind faith, you know, because if you don't work in front of an audience, then it's very difficult to know. Um, but live, you find out pretty quickly if they're not laughing. But also, you know, that's how me and Julian sort of learnt how to be comedians. We did lots of, we did three Edinburgh shows in a in a row, and we did a lot of live stuff, touring the bush around the country, Australia and stuff. So before we ever did radio or TV, we'd done five, six, seven years of live stuff. So 
we were very keen to get back to live after we'd done two TV shows, you know, because um, we knew that we'd learn a lot of stuff and that we were funnier in that environment. So I think I maybe after the bush, I had five or six years of not doing any live stuff, and I really wanted to get back to it and do some stand-up as well, because I'd always done stand-up throughout, but I just wanted to do give it another go, and I really enjoyed it, you know? It's sort of connecting with your audience as well, which you don't get to see them, you know? And they come dressed up and they get into it, and, yeah, it's really good fun. I'm not mocking the afflicted because I have a terrible face, but <laughs> you're relatively normal. Did this style of comedy find you or how did it develop? Because it is odd and strange and you sort of have to invest and immerse yourself in your world to get it. Yeah, well, all my favourite comedians are like that, you know, Harry Hill or Spike Milligan or Monty Python. It's a world that you go to and you learn the rules and then you enjoy it or fly at the Concords. I'm not as interested in people telling me about my own life and me going, that's funny, because that's what I do. It's like, I don't mind that humour, but I'm not as bothered about that. I always wanted to be taken somewhere else, you know? When someone's got a really strong view or a strong world or someone brilliant like Stuart Lee, you, you sort of enjoy their company because it's not really how you think or not, it's not a place you would have gone to. And that's, that's always my favourite. And again, when we look at you as a live act, you've got this following and you've got this career, but we don't know much about you privately. Is that important to you that yeah. you are an act and that you keep that private and then what happens on stage is for the public? Yeah, I got burnt quite a lot early on when the boost got very big, you know. You, you, I went out a lot and partied a lot, but it was around about the time there were a lot of free London papers and stuff. And so you, you only have to be in the paper once a week and it looks like you're out the whole time living at the Groucho Club or whatever, which isn't usually true because you're working, but... Um, yeah, I got caught, you know, out partying a lot in Camden with various people and stuff. So I think maybe I always try to protect my family and uh, whoever I'm going out with and my friends because I just sort of feel like, I don't know, I just, there's a line, you know, and I don't, I just think you don't want to give it away. You Are you give settled yourself now? away. <laughs> Are you happy now and settled? Uh... Yeah, much happier than I. Well, I, I wasn't unhappy. I was having a really good time. <laughs> I think everyone thought I was unhappy. What happens is you get famous and then you get invited to every party in London. You start hanging out with loads of interesting people and it's really good fun. But then, you know, you can't. It's like it's your birthday every day. You can't do that forever. And that does get boring quite quickly, especially if you're a workaholic. I'm happiest when I'm working. I'm a workaholic. But yeah, I am, I'm older now and I'm not partying as much and I'm enjoying it. And very finally, is the road sexy? You begin the tour next week. Will this be one <laughs> big showbiz romp? No, I think maybe it's the peppermint tour, peppermint tea tour. You know, <laughs> it's take a good break. I think we'll, there'll be a little bit of partying, there always is, because you can't sleep after gigs anyway because you're so full of adrenaline. But I won't be partying every night. I'm too old now. The hangovers hurt too much. And congratulations, you've just announced you're going to the US as well next year with An Evening with Noel Fielding. The yeah. DVD's out now and you're back on tour from next week. Really nice to meet you. Thank oh, you. Oh, really nice to meet you. Thank you. Cheers.